This is the K95.3 Sports Show Podcast, brought to you by The Fan Zone in Wilmer's Candy Mall. Welcome to the K95.3 Sports Show Podcast. My name is Bo Stanfis. I am your host, as usual. If you like what you hear, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button on this video. Uh, Right next to the subscribe button is the bell button. You click that and you'll get push notifications on your cell phone every Wednesday morning when a new episode comes out. Uh, Thank you to the Fan Zone for sponsoring uh, the podcast. We appreciate them doing that. Get into the Candy Mall today and see what they all have to offer. Also, make sure to uh, follow me on Twitter, K95.3 Sports Show, K95.3 Sports Show. And I'm on there quite often talking twins. Uh, and, and now with the Vikings starting, I'll be talking Vikings more often. So uh, follow me along over there. Uh, at the end of the episode, as usual, we have the uh, Stinger Spotlight brought to you by Anytime Fitness. And we have Sam Beyer, uh, infielder from Springfield, Minnesota, on uh, in the spotlight this week. Uh, good kid. Uh, lots of accomplishments. And not only personally, but uh, with his team throughout uh, his career. So definitely check that out. Uh, uh, Side note, on next week's episode, I am off Monday and Tuesday. And instead of having uh, recording like a show on Thursday or Friday and having it five, four days late, I'm just going to push the show back a day. We're going to record Wednesday night and we're going to release it Thursday morning instead of our usual Wednesday morning. So so, uh, watch for next week's episode on Thursday morning uh, instead. And uh, we'll go ahead and jump in to see who we got. And uh, thanks to uh, one person um, who I was going to have come in, uh, Russ from Anytime Fitness. Uh, he became a grandpa, and uh, so he ended up canceling. So instead of uh, Russ being in here and and Jeremy Hazen, it's back to Bo and the Jeremys. <laughs> <laughs> Still got to get that jingle made up. Man. Yeah, I know, I know. We, it's not like we don't have any equipment here to produce anything like that, but uh, <laughs> slacker. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh, so obviously, uh, Jeremy Hazen, Jeremy Goulet are in here to talk twins and a little bit of Vikings with me. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump in uh, once again. Twins three and three last week. Uh, we kind of been starting every episode over the last month and a half talking about how they're hitting five or they're winning five hundred or around there. So, you know. The, the good news is is the, the, the pain in the ass, tougher part of the schedule sh- should be over with. You know, we started off with the, uh, with the White Sox at the end of this last week, took three out of four from them, which is, which is fine. I don't expect to sweep a four-game series a lot, especially a divisional opponent. But, uh, you know, once again, you know, the Yankees game, you know, we had that back and forth hitting i mean no neither one of the team's pitching staff were like you know we're not going to give up any runs <laughs> they're yeah. just kind of like everybody hit the crap out of us and and which is funny because everybody was like oh my god look at the twins pitching look at the twins pitching i'm like look at the yankees pitching well see right. and there was a rumor that, that i had heard on i don't remember which sports show was talking about but they were saying that the yankees had used like their pitching staff in a way that they used all their best pitchers against the twins during that series to try and it was like that was their best picture pitchers. I mean, the, the, our bats were still plenty hot. I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, it was. It was just such. Like I said, it was just a horrible pitching. Either that, either horrible pitching or fantastic hitting. Yeah, it's you know, however you look at you know, it. Yeah, exactly. And so you know, it was. I don't was, care how good your hitting is. Anytime you give up or when you put up twenty seven runs over three three games. The other team didn't do some do very good uh, pitching. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah, so so you know, well, a lot of, a big thing from last week, uh, and and how and reason why they did so well was Mr. Nelson Cruz. Uh, Jeremy knows from play, or sorry, Goulet knows since there's two of you here. <laughs> <laughs> Goulet knows from playing fantasy baseball with me for a long time. I'm a huge Cruz homer. Um, Pun intended, and uh, he <laughs> he uh, I've I've always loved him. So the fact when I heard that we had signed him in the off season, I was like, I was like, that is freaking awesome. I love Cruz, and the fact that we got him for two years, that we know it's not like scope where he's going to be probably gone after this year. We know Cruz is going to be here next year. Sure, I just absolutely love it. And last week, of course, I mean this has got to been one of the easier AL Player of the Week awards to give out i would sure think so. 
seven uh, homers in seven games. Yeah, yeah you, I mean it's it's a no brainer. Yeah. Slam dunk. Yeah, seven home runs, ten runs, thirteen RBIs, batted four fourteen, slugged one point one seven two. Amazing. That's very is yeah. is what we could say. I thought you were bringing that up. But I didn't think you were going to say that. I knew that I knew that you were a fan of him, but I thought you were trying to poke a jab at me because I was playing against Stumpy's team last week and he had Cruz on. Oh, it. did he? I yes. didn't even know that. I could, I, so I got to sit and watch. I couldn't. It's just like <laughs> you want to cheer and you're you're still cheering, but you're like, yeah, oh. you're cheering, but at the same time dying, a slowly little inside. dying inside. Yeah, oh. just oh, someone cauterized the wound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot to. I wanted to look. I couldn't remember who was on. So yeah, yeah you're playing. Yeah, that's that's rough. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, so you know, just once again, I mean, Cruz is is doing you. Know, and here's where the which sucks because obviously he's been just killing it. Now we're playing interleague and we're playing against the Marlins and he's not going to play now for three games because there's no DH no position. DH. Sure. So so that kind of sucks. Hopefully he doesn't cool off now during that time. Uh, but it's, you know, well, it, it sucks to have him not hit. But he's such a liability in the field. I mean, you wouldn't put him out in the field anyways. And, I wouldn't risk it. Yeah, just, uh, just maybe, maybe – uh, a, a pinch, pinch hit, hit situation. Yeah. yeah, maybe yeah. a couple of them. Maybe I don't know if he'll get well, in every game. What sucks too is you know not only do we have Miami coming up, but then you know he's back in for a couple games against Kansas City, but then we turn around and play Atlanta. Atlanta's then, at home though. Fair, okay. Good, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait. Oh. <laughs> good but, point. Good point. Didn't really think about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you know, I checked that because I was like, okay, Atlanta's Atlanta's got a decent team, and I'm like, I who. You know, I'm like, who are they? Are they at home or not? And yeah, because we've got um, after the Miami game, we've got six. We've got ten games straight here at home: Kansas City for three, Atlanta for three, Cleveland for four. Right. So <clears throat> that's that's a chance to seriously make some hay. Those are, those are some big series. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. If we could, if we could come out of that ten games, if we could come out of there seven and three, six and four. And but only but like three of those wins against Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, you got you got to win against Cleveland for yeah, sure. Yeah, it, uh, I'll t- I'll take worst case scenario with Cleveland to split out of that four game. But you you want a three game. You want at least three win three games against Cleveland out of their four. Um, but you know, like I said, you know the bats as a whole, uh, players stepping up. Uh, Miguel Sano once again. Uh, I, I believe I was one of the few people, and I, not not in our group, because I think everybody that was here and talked on the program kind of agreed with me that everybody needs to take a breath about Sano and, and his little uh, his, his troubles in June. And so basically, last week again, batted three ninety one over the last seven days, four home runs, ten RBIs over the last month. He is batting, let's see, 308, 24 hits, 16 runs, 4 doubles, 6 home runs, 18 RBIs. Scratch that, 16 RBIs. Uh, yes, 27 strikeouts, but once again, it is what it is. That has now brought him up to batting 248, 248. which... He's getting back up in the 250, right? I mean, your power hitters like that, that's, sure. you know, that's kind of if, what you if expect. If he can hit 250 and, and put up some bombs and, and get those RBIs, I'm happy with 250, even yep. with the strikeout numbers. It's, I was having issues when he was hitting around 200. Yes, yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's, and, and I agree, because I even said, yeah, I have no problem with even f- down to 240 if he fluctuates between 240 and 260. Mm-hmm. Just kind of bouncing back and forth. If he gets over 260 and he gets 270, 280, hell yeah, I'll take it. And I still think he has that potential. Uh, but, you know, it, it's good to see it back. You know, the Sano haters have have stepped back a little bit. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it was nice to, uh, it's nice to see him back to hitting and uh, doing well, doing what he what we expect from him a little bit more. Um, some other people that I had a kind of a good last week, um, Buxton, who, pit, who played just a few games. He went six for fourteen. Boy, four. wasn't it nice to get him back in the in the outfield mm-hmm. though? It was nice yeah, to see him out there. Yeah, no, it, we definitely needed him and and uh, the the defense because, like I said last week, you know, this is the first time Buxton, Rosario, and Kepler had been in the outfield since mid June. So I mean that's that is huge, and they've all except for Kepler have all taken their you know chances on uh, on the IL. But you know Rosario a little bit of a slump. Everybody else is just doing okay. 
Um, but we've been kind of carried by Arise, Buxton, Cruz, and Sano, and then timely hitting by Kepler and Polanco. Sure. You know, they're they're both not hitting great for average, but it's about key hits. Well, I mean, if you take a look at Kepler's last at bat in the in that Yankees game with the bases loaded last Tuesday, I mean, if that's an inch farther, the Twins win that game. Mm-hmm. I mean, Hicks was l- completely laid out and yep. made a phenomenal catch on that. And if he mistimes that at all, the Twins win. Yep. Yep. And it was it was a great hit by Kepler and he's just doing what he's been doing all year. Yep. Yeah, no, it's funny thing about Kepler is somebody uh um somebody did a video online, it showed, you know, uh, you know, Trevor Bauer had that horrible game against Kansas City and he took and he threw the threw the ball oh, into yeah. center field and then they then they, they spliced it with him like throwing a throwing a ball to Kepler and Kepler hitting it out again. <laughs> 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 so, so they're like, so so he had thrown it from Kansas City all the way over to Chicago, and Kepler hit another home run <laughs> off of him. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, I thought that was absolutely freaking hilarious. Um, but but you know, it's it, it'll be interesting now coming up. Obviously, this is Tuesday night. We release this Wednesday morning. The trade deadline. It sucks that the trade deadline wasn't before we recorded because you know. Who knows what's going to happen between now and when I release this episode tomorrow morning, and who knows what's going to happen those first six hours. And unfortunately, we're not going to get to talk about it until next, next freaking Wednesday. Uh, so uh, horrible timing on that part. But you know, we did make one small trade. We got Romo um, from the Marlins. You know, okay guy, solid veteran, been there, done that several times. Uh, what, what I see, three World Series w- wins. With San Francisco, I believe. I think I saw. I think he was like the last three with San Francisco. The no, one. at least two. Yeah. So he. So yeah. So he. You know, he's been in big games. He's been in those situations. He's getting a little long in the tooth. You know, I think he's thirty-five, thirty-six. But you know, that brings that veteran leadership and the guy who who's been there, done that. Yeah, and I mean, we're not bringing him in as our closer. He's he's still yeah. got that big sweeping slider that's just you know it freezes right-handed batters. So. I mean, I'm I'm still cool with him coming in as a setup man, but I, I really like the trade overall. I mean, I, I feel like we didn't really give anything up, and we got a prospect in return and a player to be named later. I, I think the Twins did a great job on that trade. Yep, yeah. and and I don't and I think too that I, as badly as we all want the Twins to do something here before the trade deadline, I don't. I hope they just don't do something just to do something. Right. You know, obviously the reports are out that uh, the Mets want for Syndergaard. They want they want Buxton, and the Twins are like, ah, click, <laughs> <laughs> nope, not happening. Uh, you know, there was a, a Judd Zolgad had a had a uh, a poll saying if the, if you had to give up one of these four players to get Noah Syndergaard, who would you give up? I think I know who you guys are going to say because I think there's one easy one, but he put. Kepler, Buxton, Rosario, Sano. Goulet. I'd be a toss up for me, probably between. Uh, I, you know, I think I'd, I'd probably go with Rosario. That's that's who I would. I mean, it would be kind I, of a toss up between him and Sano, but I, I think I would hang on Sano and, and probably let Rosario go. Yeah, I mean, I I agree. It's it's a toss up between the two of them, but. I mean, Rosario is definitely the least uh, as far as defensively. Um, and with with uh, Kepler coming up the way that he is out in that outfield and the defense that you get from Buxton, I just I can't give up either of those guys. Yeah. So I would 100% I'd give up Rosario. You're going to be able to find another serviceable left fielder. He's not going to have the power, but right now the Twins have the power up and down the lineup. So... I don't think that it's that big of a deal, but he is one of those clubhouse leaders. That's the that's mm. the problem. Yeah, and and Rosario is a little more streakier, especially sure. this year. Yeah, he's been very definitely. streaky, and uh, but yeah, no, I think I think like Buxton and Kepler are a hundred percent off limits. Yeah, like mm-hmm. that's why I said if 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 anybody ever said that, I guarantee the Twins just hang up the phone on them because they're not interested at all. And uh, so, like I said, who knows? We'll we'll find out more tomorrow. Um, or later this day, if you're hearing it, or yesterday, if you're listening to this on, on <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> You'll know soon enough. But uh, 
but uh, we'll 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 review it and talk about it next week. What happens or what doesn't happen? But uh, I hope I hope just to shut up the the ignorant. I don't want to say ignorant fans. The the whiny fans, the crying fans that are just expect them not to do anything. But then again, I don't want them just to do something to do something. Yeah. So. I, I do want them to make a trade though, just so they just shut up a little bit. Because I mean, they're just you, they're just waiting. They're waiting for that trade deadline to go by and nothing to happen, just to just to start crying online in social sure. media. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like we still need to at least get we need to get one more reliever. Yeah, plain and simple. I'm I'm fine with our rotation. Um, you know, especially since Gibby's been you know serviceable as a three. You get to the postseason and you're going to a three-man rotation anyway. I think that we'd be okay with that. I just am not sold on our bullpen still. So we, I feel like we need to get another another reliever. Yep. Yeah, and and there was like, uh, and 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 Pinata's been Pinata's been doing actually pr- very well. I mean, you take away, let's see, when did I do this tweet here? Is there a date on here? Of course not. Um, he. I had just before one of his last starts. I think it was the oh, before the Oakland one. No, maybe before the Oakland one, where he had a five point oh six ERA at five walks. He had a bad game there, but prior to that, his last eight starts, he had a two point eight seven ERA, forty seven Ks, eleven walks, forty hits allowed. Um, then he had that kind of off outing against Oakland, Oakland, but then he came back and had a good game against the White Sox, and uh, so. You know that that's another one. That's but Odorizzi needs to turn it around <clears throat> now. Yeah, how stopping that slide would be a very nice thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, going from lights out to absolutely the opposite. In his last one, two, three, four, five, six, his last seven starts, he's only had a game ERA under five once, and that was against Cleveland, which was that's a good game to pitch good, but he had a nine. A six, a fifteen, and then against New York, he had the twenty ERA for the game. He needs to turn around. Has ballooned his ERA up to three point eight four on the season. His WHIP's up to one point two now. He needs. Yeah, everybody goes through streaks once again. So no example, but for us to go anywhere in the postseason, we definitely need Odorizzi to step it up. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. So we'll we'll leave it at that for the uh, Twins for now. Like I said, we'll talk more next week. Let's get into the Vikings. Uh, to be totally honest, I felt the first weekend of training camp was pretty nondescript. You know, there was no, like, no huge injuries, thank God. <laughs> Just to say no <laughs> yeah. Teddy Bridgewater leg injury. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, there was no, um, you know, the occasional great pass and great catch type of thing, but nothing like, holy crap, you got to see this. You see the guys right. OTAs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and, and so... The only thing I'd really want to talk about uh, with the Vikes is the special teams. Because obviously we, we ended up signing, cutting the new uh, the uh, long snapper. And, you know, it's, I think, I think he's, I think he's going to win almost guaranteed unless he just totally craps the bed. I think he's going to be a new long snapper. I think McDermott's gone. Uh, you don't draft a long snapper in the seventh round who's in the military and then work to get him okay to play. If you didn't really need want him on the team, sure. Yep. So I think he's got. But uh, the the most interesting part is this whole playing around with the holder incidents. <laughs> I mean, are, are they just bored already? Are they kind of like, I mean, is Wiley that bad all of a sudden that they that they're like, hey, BB, hey Thielen, come over here and hold for us? I mean, I know is that kind. Are, are, is it is it almost like they're kind of saying? That it hasn't been our kicker who's been the problem recently. It's been our s- snapping and our holding. That's how I take it as. Sure. I, I'm i not 100% sure on, on this, but I feel like when you get one of those guys that are a little bit more athletic like that, it opens up your options for any sort of trick plays that you're doing, right? You've yeah, got your punter that. as your holder. There's not a whole lot of options that you got. Yep. You know, but when you get a guy like, you know, BB, who he was a holder in college and – you get him out there with that athleticism. I mean, I, I feel like it, it opens up your options of what you can run out of that set. Yeah. No, I, I see that. I, I, I get that. It's just, just messing around with field goal unit again. 
You know what I mean? It's just like it's it's like the Achilles heel of Zimmer. Well, that's just it. I think everybody gets nervous about it because it's like anytime it's like, oh my god, we can't even make what we have work. Just don't no special trick plays, no nothing. Just let's do you know. But I I think that is like you said a lot of just how athletic some of these guys are, and they might be trying to well, and who knows? Maybe they are starting to think too that well, if we can't get a kicker, maybe we better start figuring out we're going to run a different play half the time and fake the field goal. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, it's just it's just interesting. It'll it'll. I, I did read how they, uh, with Wiley as the as the holder, that there was that they that all of the field goals were made, and then I think there was a couple of times that Thielen was back there and they were missed. So I mean, right there it just shows, you know. I guess if if there if there's a time to do it, it's now. Mm-hmm. Right. When yeah. you're messing around, I mean, I suppose you know the kickers just the kickers and punters and long snappers are just off to the side working all day doing the same thing. You know, so I mean, you might as well play around with it, I guess. But something to watch and something to see interesting. I don't know. It's just odd. It's just odd. But uh, uh, only other thing I want to talk about was the wide receiver position a little bit. Um, Zilstra uh, back off the pup after his little hamstring. Uh, that's good. Um, like I mentioned last week, he needs to be playing to make the team. Um, I don't think he. I don't think you could write his name in and pin to make the team. As of right now, even though good news for him, sounds like our our, our seventh round rookies um, aren't aren't impressing anything or anybody. Um, that would be uh, Johnson, um, Olabizi Johnson, and Dylan Mitchell. I know they're really high on both of them, especially Mitchell. <coughs> Excuse me, but so yeah, so that's that's good news for Zilstra if they're just crap in the bed, but. You know, I still think it's going to be interesting to come down. I like I said, I still think BB's going to get the number three spot. You're going to have, I think, uh, Badette is going to make the team. I have said that last week. I think Badette's going to have actually a, a good season. I I I I really like him, and I really I really want to see him succeed. And and obviously Zilstra there, and it's going to come down to Zilstra Taylor, I believe, for the fifth spot if they keep six. You know, and who knows? Maybe Treadwell will somehow make the damn team. Yeah, I mean, because he's dead money. He's one hundred percent dead money. It's either you pay him, and it's going to depend on the special teams. Either you pay him and put him on the field, or you pay him to not be on the field. We're not saving a penny by releasing him. Right. So, I don't know. What What are your guys' thoughts on the wide receiver? Because I know I talked last week with with Dan and Tim. What are your uh, Hazen? Go ahead with the. You know, I'm I'm still kind of out of the loop. I. I'm coming in from out of town. I haven't gotten to watch nearly as much Vikings uh, as I've wanted. Uh, I'm definitely uh, going to make that a priority this fall <laughs> for the well, first time in my life. Well, thanks for nothing. Um, <laughs> you're you're welcome. welcome. <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah, no, I... Now you're going to be... I'm sorry, Jerry. No, now no. you're going to be in the thick of it. You know, you're not going to be over on the uh, West Coast trying to pay attention to the Vikings. You'll yeah, be, no kidding. You'll be in the thick of it now. So you get to good. watch the national broadcast games only. Yeah, because. Yeah. God forbid we show someone other than the Seahawks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, no, um, you know, I kind of agree with you there on Treadwell with the dead money. And, you know, honestly, I mean, uh, I know that he's kind of burned us on a few things, but I, I, the couple times that he played last year, he really didn't do that bad. I mean, and he, and I think he's gotten a lot better with his ball control from what I remember. And I mean, you know, and the catching, because I kind of know he seemed to have that issue of running before he caught the ball yeah, kind of a thing. The and Green Bay was, game last yeah, year. Yeah, like, it's like, oh, you know, but, <clears throat> you know, maybe a combination of having him and um, uh, Zilstra. Uh, the competition. Yeah, I mean, I think that they could really play off of each other there and, and who knows? I mean, you know, they could flourish and whoever ends up being better would stay. Obviously, I know I, our mainstays would be Dig and, Diggs and uh, Thielen. Uh, you know, and I kind of, I just, earlier today, I just glanced and I didn't, I, I didn't get a chance to read the article, but they were talking about, they were uh, saying that that was one of the, the big things that the Vikings, they really need that third wide receiver to step up into place. They said, you know, the, mm-hmm. the two that they've gotten, Thielen and Diggs, are huge. But to be a truly dominant team, it's like they just they need one more big mm-hmm. one to stand up, which makes sense. I mean, if you get the big three, you're going to be sitting pretty good. But that's that's about where I'm at. I'm kind of in Jeremy's boat, too. I haven't really done a whole lot on Vikings yet. <laughs> right. Yeah, because uh, uh, like we said last week, it kind of snuck up on us. Yeah, and, it did. And because the Twins are doing so well, we weren't – 
we're not waiting. looking we're not forward to the fall to try to get our minds off of the other yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, we're not going out of our way to be like, geez, we need when's the Vikings start so we can stop thinking here. about the Twins. So, <laughs> so it is kind of nice, uh, you know. And to be totally honest, I'm not going to talk a lot about, um, especially training camp. I mean, once we get into some of the games, uh, the preseason games, we'll talk maybe a little bit here and there. Right. But to be totally honest, I don't even watch. I don't watch the full games, preseason games. Uh, I'll watch the starters and a little bit of the the second team, but I'll shut it off or fast for or record it and fast forward through it, just to catch any. You know, if I read on Twitter, that was a huge play that I want to see or something. But you know, you know, we'll be. I haven't decided when we'll be. We'll have our our season preview for the Vikings yet, but uh, you know that'll probably come up. Maybe probably that episode just before the season starts. Probably that first episode in September. But you know, you know, to be totally honest, I I think we're just gonna kind of stop it right there. Unless you guys want to talk anything more about Vikings, no. That I mean, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. No, so we'll uh, we'll stop it there. We'll go uh, right in here to the Stinger Spotlight. It's time for the Stinger Spotlight, brought to you by Anytime Fitness in Wilmer, Lynchfield, and Marshall. All right, and we're here with the Stinger Spotlight. We got Sam Beyer here. Um, first off, thank you for coming in, Sam. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, and uh, we will go ahead and start off here. You know, uh, so you went to high school in Springfield, Minnesota. Yeah. This is back to back weeks on the Stinger Spotlight. We got Minnesota boys in here. Um, you know, while you were while you were there, both you and the team were very successful. Um, you personally uh, won many awards your junior and senior u- year, including all conference and all section honors, being named Minnesota State All Tournament Team and All Area Team, um, and then of course the team then was state runner up in 2015 and then you guys won it a little revenge coming into 2016 with a single a tournament um, with actually you hitting the game tying double descended into extra innings you know tell me about your experience at state on target field and being instrumental in helping your team win the championship um yeah it was surreal um as a high schooler playing on target field you don't really um see it all as you're on the field you kind of just take it in you look you walk in we walked in from the left field gate and you kind of look around and you're like holy cow look at this <laughs> place like, normally playing on these small town fields but yeah um no it was awesome um i enjoyed every minute of it and there was a lot of talent on that team and um, our coaching staff was amazing so um i can't take any of that credit it was just <laughs> one group effort so well, well, that's awesome. You know, obviously, you know, it's a, it's a big deal to play on target field. It's a big deal to win the state championship. I mean, does Springfield, has Springfield always kind of had like a, a good baseball team? Have they always been a solid team um, in I history th- or is it more recently? Um, I th- Well, I think the small towns just all around us have always been competitive. And um, we just happen to be at the top end of that time. And right now they're, they're still doing well. Um, great talent going up. And I think it's just a just to show those coaches are doing a good job. It was when I was in high school. It was Bob Fink, and the assistant was uh, my brother-in-law Brandon Wilhelmy, and now uh, Bob switched to football, and Brandon's the head coach now. And oh, okay. those two do a great job. And uh, Bob took the football team to state this year, so it's just oh jeez. I think I think it's just a mixture of, of talent and the coaches yeah, are awesome. Yeah. So and I, didn't I see too that you ended up that you wrestled and didn't the team win state wrestling too? Uh, or no, was it, it was, individual? It was individual. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was a. Yeah, I was a wrestler in high school, loved it, and still miss it to this day. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, was, it was hard for me to not go to college and wrestle, but um, in the in the end, I'm glad I picked baseball. Baseball, awesome, awesome. Well, well, after high school, you decided to go to Augustana College in Sioux Falls and play for the Vikings, um, where your high school success followed you, not only in your hit or hitting, averaging around 300 in your three years that you've been there, but also, once again, as a team with the Vikings, they won their first division two national title in 2018 you know you already talked about the high school championship now now tell me about the college one you know how different is it i mean you're traveling around the u.s playing in that tournament yeah it's way different you kind of got to get used to that like that you said you're traveling aspect um first we played in the regional it was in southern arkansas so we had to go a long ways and we had to get used to the heat you know like oh, when yeah. we play when we play um around here it's an average of 45 degrees in the spring you know and <laughs> you're trying to run away from the snow while you're playing and so we got down to southern arkansas and we all had ice towels in our neck in between every inning but yeah it was totally different and then when we made so now it's just the regional went straight to the world series now it's different it's like the Div- division one where it's regional super regional and world series but the year we won it it was regional and world series which is in Cary, north carolina and um it was the same way just got to get used to that traveling and that schedule time because everything's just set for you. So you yeah. go to the hotel, you eat, and you go to BP, then you play, and it's all just 
totally set where it's a little different when we're at home. But no, it was crazy and awesome experience. And once again, the talent and the coaches, unreal. So yeah, well, awesome man, awesome. So so you know this is this is your uh, third year playing in Northwood leagues. Um, but you, but you're first with the Stingers because you were with the Duluth Huskies for the first two, correct? Yep. yep. Um, did did Duluth ask you back this year, or did you like I want something different? So the Stingers reached out to you. How did that? Uh, I was a little bit of both. Um, Duluth they asked me back, but it was for a temp contract where Wilmer offered me a full, so mm, I, was, okay. I jumped all over that when they uh, offered me that. And it's closer to home, obviously. Yep. Where, um, Duluth is more like five, six hours. Wilmer yeah. is only about an hour. So yeah, family awesome. and friends can come watch you more often. Yeah, that's awesome. No, that is good. That's good. Well, well, uh, once again, you've had a good year so far with the Stingers. Um, in fact, uh, saw last night on my on my, on Twitter going through uh, following the Stingers that that uh, you let off the bottom of the first last night, which was July twenty fifth, with a home run. <laughs> it's a hell of a way to start off. But but what really jumped out to me when looking at your stats this year was your twenty eight stolen bases. Uh, it, you know, also going through your your college and your high school uh, article, you know, articles online and stuff, your your speed was never really mentioned. Have you always been kind of a, a speedster on the base path? Um, brought up through high school. Going um, going back to Coach Bob Fang when he was head coach, he really liked to run. So, um, our I was my sophomore year. I think we had a senior on the team that had like close to fifty stolen bases. Oh wow! And then, uh, junior had like 30 and then I was around 28 or 30 and he carried that through all the way through my senior year and we got to Augustana so our head coach's son played at Augustana oh, okay. before I got there and he brought the running from Augustana so when we get to Augustana it was the same thing we like to run and um, I think I've been around like 15 stone bases every year in college so um, I, li- I like to run and my goal here was to show that I could run because um, yeah. I'm not necessarily a guy that's going to hit 15 20 home runs or bat 400 so yeah i like to show that i can run so that's kind of my thing so yeah no that's that's what i've always i i would say if i was ever um coaching a higher level type of baseball that that would be my style too is the running because i mean that's the key i mean you're turning a single into technically a double because mm-hmm. you're ending up on second base yeah. and now you're just a single away from using your speed to be scoring mm-hmm. on that hit so so i think i'd I, i'd definitely be one of those uh, uh, just like your past coaches of of being the runner type yeah of and coach. it's definitely a risk reward type deal but yes um, and you can get away with it in high school a lot more as like, uh, the catchers and aren't as good as college but um like coaches in college have it down to a science we do it every day for about a uh, half hour to an hour and it shows. All right. Awesome. Awesome, dude. So, so you know, well, can, you know, and I was just, while looking up stuff, I was, and I was like, well, considering you've won a championship at every level so far, and you didn't win one with Duluth when you were in the <laughs> Northwood League, I mean, just naturally that means the Stingers are going to win a championship <laughs> this year, right? I mean. Uh, possibly. I'm not going to guarantee anything. <laughs> Well, yeah, I was just I was just throwing it out there, you know, see what's happening, you know. So, uh, you know, what what have you enjoyed the most about playing with the Stingers? Um, I think this is the group of guys and the coaches. It's been it's been awesome. Um, everyone kind of gets together and has fun, and um, yeah, it's kind of like my high school and college teams. It's just everyone feels like they're family. Um, the last couple summers, there's been, I mean, it was good, but it's not as tight as this group has been. So. Mm-hmm. I've I've really enjoyed it, and um, the coach has done a great job. Okay, well, you kind of took over my next question, which I was going to ask: How does it compare to the Duluth Huskies? But mm-hmm. you kind of mentioned that the the, the team, the family aspect, um, and, and 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 I've heard that from um, other Stinger players coming in here for the spotlight. So, so it's it's nice to hear that because I think I think Wilmer really uh, appreciates what the Stingers have brought to town and just the atmosphere that they have brought, mm-hmm. and uh, that's that's great. So, uh, one more here before we get to uh, the get to know you the rapid questions segment. Uh, who is your host family? Uh, Dave and Vicki Henley um, from Spicer, Minnesota. Okay, awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, no, I like that program. It's a it's a cool idea to do that and have the local families involved yeah. and stuff like that. So, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump into here. Like I said, these are you know just random questions. If you have to think a second for some of them, don't worry. If we if we go off on a side tangent on from one of your answers, that's <laughs> very possible. Also, so so let's uh, go ahead and start with uh, favorite color, blue. Favorite. MLB club, 
Twins. I was going to say, it gotta, better be. <laughs> got to stay to the hometown, yeah. <laughs> been fun watching them this yeah, year. Yeah, it been? has, yeah. Uh, All and those then, home runs and um, starting pitchers have been doing well. Yeah, did you catch, it. did you see what happened last night? Cruz's yeah. three home runs. Yeah. And, oh, I love Cruz. That's... I've, I loved Cruz way before this, and the fact that the Twins signed him, it, it, it's still I can't believe that Nelson's Cruz is playing, yeah, for, the playing for the Twins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got a lot of big pickups this year. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, but yeah, no, Nelson Cruz is my boy. Uh, <laughs> one thing you can't live without? Oh, um, probably my truck. I don't know what I'd do without a car. Um, I think I'd be lost. I'm yeah. not like walking or running yeah, places. Yeah, that's the freedom. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I. I don't know if I'd be able to. I like. I like my truck because I always throw stuff in the back. I don't yeah, know. yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, favorite thing to do in your downtime? Um, I like the outdoors. I like hunting and fishing. Um, in the fall, every weekend, I'm usually trying to hunt geese or deer. So yeah. Um, I like the outdoors. Awesome, awesome. Favorite all time ba- or favorite baseball player of all time? Your favorite player? I'm gonna have to say Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. Yeah, shortstop. Grew up being a shortstop, and he was a gamer. I love how he played and yep. try to play like him. So yeah, and 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 I've I've said before because I, I can't remember who said it. Somebody else said Derek Jeter, and and that's you know everybody hates the Yankees. It seems yeah. like everybody, but everybody still respected Jeter. Mm-hmm. It's, and. And I think that shows what he, who he was as a person, that he can rise from the hate of the Yankee organization and still be revered by every, all the fans out there. Yeah, he was, he was that class act, and I think everyone was that was that respect. Not necessarily that he was such a great player, which he was, but that he was a class act, and everyone respected him for that. Yep, so. yep, no, I agree. Um, the one food you can never get sick of. Ooh, um, steak. Steak. All right. Favorite TV show of all time? Friends. 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 Nice. Nice. Favorite movie of all time? Mm-hmm. God, any of them from Adam Sandler. <laughs> um, yeah. Just, just, just Adam Billy Sandler. Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore. Oh, there you go. Oh, you can't go wrong with them. There you go. Now you're getting into my time. <laughs> yeah. That's my, I, my sister and brother grew up on uh, They're a lot older than me, so. Oh, okay. That's what I grew up watching. Yeah, yeah well, well they, they, they taught you right. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if baseball isn't in your future, what would you want to do? I'm going to school to be a teacher, elementary okay. teacher, and awesome. uh, coaching for sure. Um, so. Looking at high school teaching, coaching? Yep. I, well, I'm going for elementary education okay. and uh, have an endorsement in special ed and middle school, so kind of all over. But okay. definitely want to be a coach of one of the three sports I played. I, I don't really care. But. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Here some quick ones here. Ford or Chevy? Well, I drive a Ford, so I have to say that, but yeah. my dad drives a Chevy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. Burger King or McDonald's? Burger King. Smell you hate the most? Mm, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, probably just the smell of, like, plastic. I don't know. I don't like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know what you, you know mean. what I'm saying? Like, when it's hot. Um, I don't know. Yeah, no, I get. It. I know what you mean. That's kind of a tough. I've never thought of that before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next one of these days, now you're gonna smell something. You're just gonna hate. You're, yeah, you're gonna think that's of this. what that's what it's gonna be. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That's All a right. tough question. Yeah. Well, let's go to the opposite side. Smell you love the most. Ah, uh, depends. If we're not talking about food, um, I really like to smell gasoline. Like when you fill up. A vehicle or something. I like that smell. You like that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. It's kind of weird. <laughs> hey. Hey. Everybody. Different, trying different to be, things yeah, for I'm everybody. trying to be different. I'm not trying to, like, I don't know, like, fresh cut grass. Which has something. been the most popular yeah. answer to that question. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, yeah. trying to be a little different. Yeah, yeah. No, I got you. Uh, superhero power you'd want? Ooh. Either f- speed or fly. One of those two. Nice. Well, you already got the speed. Yeah. <laughs> Not to that extent. <laughs> All right. Favorite musical group or artist? Um, right now, I'd say Old Dominion country. So yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, and last but not least, favorite holiday? Christmas. Christmas, yeah. Yeah. Yep, I, I hear you. Family gets together. Yep, yeah. yep. Well, awesome. Well, Sam, thank you for uh, taking a few minutes. That ends it here. Uh, so thank you for coming in and doing this. Thank you for Appreciate having Appreciate it. Uh, good luck. I say this every time to each player when they come in, but uh, good luck uh, in your 
college career. Good luck the rest of the year for Stingers, and good luck in your life in general. Thank you. Thanks, man. And that was the Stinger Spotlight. Thanks for uh, Sam for coming in again. We appreciate him taking some time and uh, yeah, coming in, answering a few questions, and having the uh, Stinger Nation just get to know him a little bit better. Once again, Minnesota kid, very accomplished. So I want to thank both the Jeremys, Bo and the Jeremys, for uh, coming in and uh, doing the show this week. And uh, we will uh, see you all next week.